Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9. Today's video is the basically the assembly of the Nixie Clock kit that I got off eBay and I will link in the description. I'll link to the <coughs> seller's latest version which is actually up because I brought the last of this particular one. And currently you can see me popping in the pins and the Nixie tubes because that's how I ended up popping them in the board. The most awkward asshole bit of the kit to do. Fart asking around on YouTube because I like to have things to watch. I actually uh, was watching a lot of Lois Rossman stuff during the time period of building this. I think that's very much appropriate. I do enjoy uh, watching uh, stuff like that, all the good old repairs and whatnot. He's got some good life advice. But yes, these are IN12 Nixie tubes. They are very nice. They use an upside down 2 instead of a 5. And all that good jazz. I'm not quite sure how much I'm going to ramble about, but yeah, you can see Jim Jams. It's a pretty damn awesome little kit. Some things I'd like to highlight that I like about it is the uh, general software. It is actually very pleasing to look at. The, it has a nice fade in and out between the digits changing and looks pretty damn awesome. Another thing I love about it is the size of the digits. I mean, I can actually read it sitting on my desk, but I haven't actually built a case for it yet. I've sort of started, half-heartedly started. And I have, and I can lay there in bed without my glasses on. I don't sleep in glasses. Glasses are a massive pain in the arse to try and sleep in. Believe me, I've tried it. And I can see I can read it. It's, like, it's a clock I can actually read in bed, which is a rarity for me. Lately I have been wearing my Nixie watch in bed, mostly because it's so comfortable I forget it's on my wrist. Seriously, my Nixie watch is super comfortable. <laughs> but yeah, you may notice I was uh, fart asking about the Nixie tubes there. I was just pl unplugging them, plugging them back in, make sure everything was lined up and it worked. This uh, part took the longest, mostly because of the resistors. I left, I did it the opposite way to how I usually assemble these sorts of things, and sort of left the resistors out last because, well, it takes effort to work out what uh, resistance they are, thanks to the uh, colour banding rather than printing the values on the resistor itself. I have never memorised the uh, colour chart, and so the capacitors are far by worse. The you know, things like tantalum capacitors, where it's those stupid code things. I've never been able to figure that, figure that code out. It's, uh, yeah, I don't like that code, because it's a massive pain in the arse to figure out. Other things you will notice chilling on my desk is nothing that really looks outside the ordinary and isn't always there, apart from I don't think you've seen my fancy set of screwdrivers yet, which you will see me using during the period of that time lapse, if you haven't already. Using my Antec soldering station, which I pulled out the skip at uni and has since become my favourite soldering station. There you go, I'm using one of the screwdrivers there, I can't remember what for. <laughs> I forget, I built this a few days ago now. I built it two days, both when I came home from work. So yeah, I built it when I was tired. I find these sorts of things very nice to zone out to, these sorts of kits. Good to build when you're tired. There's probably someone out there who would say it's a bad idea to build these when you're tired because you're handling hot metals and you're essentially building a device that uses high voltages. In fact, um, I've set mine to just under 170 volts. Which is not what you want to put your finger on. And amazingly, I haven't zapped myself on it yet. I would have expected myself to have accidentally touched the wrong part of the board and zapped myself. But so far, no. I have not gone and done such a stupid thing. In other news, I've spent all day watching Ashens, because why the hell not? In fact, I've spent the last two days pretty much watch, watching Ashens stuff, because why the hell not? <sighs> I like my lazy days. I don't get them enough anymore. But hey, the new job's going well, which is good. So, yeah, after the uh, not-so-successful uh, first attempt at my career, 
for those who don't know, it basically got made redundant because they tried to set up a department and they weren't successful at it. And I was in that department, me and someone else who also got made redundant. And so I have now gone out and now I'm at a different company uh, doing more uh, vulnerability analysis, pen testy type stuff on websites. And it's good fun. In fact, I've even been learning, in fact, I've even been doing some programming of Python, of all things, which is actually I quite enjoyed that. I found it quite fun going through code, debugging it all day. Another thing I want to do is the interesting thing about this particular unit is it uses an AT Mega 328, uh, basically same type as in the Arduino, so I need to read the code from it, find some sort of decompiler to see, and go from there. We're also hitting to the end of the video, which is not a bad thing. Uh, you'll notice from the uh, time clock that is way out because it's actually number eight and we were in the 20s when I built this. The time also seems to be out by about an hour because by the time I finished this it was midnight and I had work the next day. <laughs> well it was about 10 minutes past midnight is what it was. But we don't worry about that. No we don't. Yeah it's good fun building this and you can see me going through the resistors got my multimeter just to double check my calculations but I don't trust my brain not to get it wrong still using that same those same set of crappy snips that I've used for years I think they came with a set that came from Woolworths back when they were still around ah Woolworths how we miss you that was an awesome little store, all sorts of random little useful things in it. Oh yes, this is where I'm soldering in the resistors for the blue LED, which I didn't actually which I didn't actually use because I don't I find blue LEDs on Nixie clocks are just kind of tacky. If you like them, fair enough. I also added my own connectors to this rather than uh, the uh, default thing. This is where I just go through playing with it after this. But yeah, I added my own connectors to the board so I can unplug it rather than it be permanently soldered together. But as we're coming to the end of the video, I'm going to say thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and now you'll go on to my more live commentary of where I was trying to figure out the operating system, which turned out not to be too difficult, rather intuitive, which is what I like. Thanks for watching. After some far arsing around, it is complete. My Nixie clock. Now where to put it? It should certainly be uh, in a place of pride. I'm thinking with the uh, game consoles and stuff or something. Or replace the uh, current uh, kind of rubbishy thing. Yeah, 24 of the 8th, 2016. That's correct. And then it should go to temperature. And I will let you see the temperature inside my room. What? Oh yeah, it does. What the hell is that? That's not it. What the hell is 85.1? Oh no, it's displaying it in Fahrenheit. Why would it do that? A Fahrenheit means nothing. Anyway, I'll sort that out. I can't leave you without giving you proper temperature. 32.2. And. The coolest point in the room is the floor, which is 27.4 centigrade. So yeah, not only that, the humidity levels are pretty damn high. So yeah, quite uncomfortable. Yeah, 12 hours um, Fahrenheit, unfortunately. Um, I might want to pop that out because it's a standard 80 mega 328, the same type in the uh, Arduino. So. Might be able to change the firmware a bit there, so that's good. I'll do that when it can be asked. <laughs> Actually, how is it in comparison to that? Eh, about the same. Give or take. 